electrophoresis with charged dyes. You must wear safety goggles and gloves during this exercise. This is the electrophoresis chamber. On each end, there's a wire running along the bottom and up the side. The black end is the negative pole and the red end is positive. There's a notch cut into one side of the chamber. The gel will sit in this tray, which fits inside the chamber. The small tab on the side of the tray fits into the notch on the side of the chamber. The wires will connect to the posts on the lid, which connect to two leads that will be plugged into the power pack. When you put the lid on, you must match black to black and red to red. Pour enough buffer into the chamber that it fills both of the deeper ends and covers the gel. Just a couple of millimeters above the surface is great. The buffer has ions in it that transmit electrical charge from the wires to the gel. It's important for the buffer to cover the surface of the gel so that we have a complete circuit. We'll put the foam rack on a paper towel again. Since it's possible to mix up which dye went into which well, you might use your paper towel to label your tubes according to the well they're going into. I'll be loading my wells from left to right. Lay out your supplies within easy reach. Put a yellow tip onto the micro pipette. Check that your volume is set right. 3.5 microliters for the charged dyes. Open the first die putting the lid on a paper towel. Press the plunger down a few times to feel the first stop. Press down to the first stop and hold. Put the tip into the die and release the plunger. Put the lid back on and put the die in the rack. Keeping your hand steady, lower the tip into the well. Squeeze the plunger just down to the first stop. Remove the tip from the buffer and then release the plunger. Eject the tip into the beaker and get a fresh one. Repeat until each die is loaded into a well. Press to the first stop, tip in die and release, cap on, die and rack. Don't touch the tip to the bottom of the well, and don't press past the first stop. Squeezing the plunger too far would create an air bubble that will push die out of the well. Now a close up so that you can see what 3.5 microliters looks like. Get the cap back on, tube in the rack. It can take a second to find the opening. There, squeeze, pull out, then release. If you used a paper towel to label your dies, keep it with the foam rack. Place the lid onto the chamber. Make sure the colors match first. Line it up red to red and black to black. Sometimes it takes a wiggle to get it to sit correctly. The two leads have plastic jackets that cover the posts. They slide back automatically as you plug them in. Plug them into the same horizontal row on the power pack. Again, match black to black and red to red. Our power packs have a couple of settings, 75 watts and 150 watts. Push the rocker switch toward the 75 watt side. The light shows that it has power. To make sure the circuit is complete, check the wires along the ends for bubbles. Even a few bubbles on one side is enough to confirm a complete circuit. When the time is finished, turn the power off first. Unplug the leads and remove the lid. Hold the chamber in one hand and wiggle the lid free with the other. Some dyes have moved toward the red end and some toward the black. You should be able to tell the charges of the molecules by which direction they moved. Putting a sheet of paper under the chamber can help you to see lighter colored dyes or trace amounts that separated out from the unknown solution.